What up guys, Don Sensei here. I know you guys have been waiting for a continuation of Wealthy Now's Team 7, and yes, it's finally here. At the end of the video, I'll explain why it took me a good minute to continue this series. Without further ado, let's get started, because I know you guys are ready. So just like any Shonen series, let's recap what happened last time. Jirai and Naruto and Inada have located Tsunade. A couple of drinks into it, Tsunade starts to really kill Naruto's dream, which is becoming Okage. This ultimately leads to a ninja street fight, World Star Hip Hop style. Needless to say, Tsunade proves too fucking powerful, but she did get shook by Naruto's incomplete Rasengan, which is honestly a iconic moment when you look at it back then. Ultimately, they made a bet between themselves. Basically, if Naruto can master this jutsu in a mere week, Tsunade will offer up her necklace, which is worth a lot of coin. So Naruto gladly accepts it, knowing that his ninja pride and his ninja way is on the line. He can't back out of this. So let's begin. With the day about to end, Hinata, Jiraiya alongside with Naruto head back to their inn. But Naruto decides to do some late night training, realizing that his ninja pride is on the line and he has a lot of work to do. As he tells Hinata and Jiraiya that he's off to do some training, Jiraiya and Hinata look at Naruto and they notice his face expression. Jiraiya knows exactly what it is. It's a face that oozes dedication. As Naruto stares at them, his thoughts are, I cannot allow myself to lose to such a woman. As Naruto leaves to go do some training, Hinata begins to follow but is quickly stopped by Jiraiya. Hinata begins to question Jiraiya, why did you stop me? But Jiraiya responds with saying that, Hinata, look, I know you want to support him, but did you see the look that he had in his his eyes, Hinata begins to recollect exactly what Jiraiya was speaking of and she realizes that Naruto was bearing a look that said dedication. He was not looking at Jiraiya nor Hinata, he was focused on his single goal which is mastering the Rasengan. Jiraiya smirks telling Hinata not to worry about it, Naruto has all the ingredients to master this jutsu. He also tells Hinata that he knows that her relationship with Naruto has blossomed, it has grown. And he begins to tease Hinata a little bit, but then he tells Hinata that it seems like your bond can rival that of Sasuke's bond with Naruto, maybe even more. And she begins to question, is Naruto really that close with Sasuke? Boys are much different from girls. They may fight and bicker, but Naruto views Sasuke as a brother, maybe even more. And Hinata begins to realize that he may be right. With all that being said, Jirai begins to ask Hinata about Tsunade. What do you think about Tsunade, Hinata? She replies with saying that she seems like a good drinker. Jiraiya begins to laugh saying that she is, that she is. But on the serious note, he begins to tell Hinata that I know that you've seen I'm training Naruto and Sasuke has Kakashi. Our teaching styles mesh together. It's not to say that I can't teach you, but I don't think I'm the right mentor for you. Tsunade could be that mentor. Hinata, I truly believe that your skill set works perfect with Tsunade. You have the Byakugan. You already have knowledge of the human anatomy. And beyond that, if you're able to master the healing arts, you would be a great asset to Naruto and Sasuke. God knows they're always getting hurt. And beyond that, I can vouch that the hardest person who's ever punched me and nearly killed me is Tsunade herself. With that being said, we head to the forest. We hear small explosions with grunts. Naruto is still training out there. His hands are badly bruised and in pain. He keeps on rotating and compressing chakra as best as he can each time he keeps failing with all his might. He wills himself not to lose heart. He tells himself nothing has ever been given to him besides what the villagers titled him which was the title of a demon but now he has people who believe in him. He wants to try hard for them. As he thinks about the people that believe and trust in him the first person that comes into mind is Hinata as he turns bright red wondering why. The next couple of days Naruto hasn't slept in a proper bed. Hinata brings him food and wants to stay with him but is reminded by Jiraiya wise words not to stay with him let him grow he already has everything now he has to do it himself Hinata runs into Tsunade in town while she's in deep thought Tsunade shouts Naruto which catches Hinata's attention and Tsunade begins to laugh and tells her kid you're an open book Tsunade then tells Hinata where is that runt chuckling Hinata replies Naruto is training hard right now as she thinks to herself that he's gonna prove you wrong Tsunade glares at Hinata able to read her mind but realizes Hinata isn't backing down on this one. Tsunade then tells Hinata, why is Naruto so special to you, girl? Hinata replies, Naruto works hard and doesn't give up. Tsunade replies in a serious tone, many ninjas work hard and train every day, but that's just normal for a ninja, and the foolish ones always die first. Hinata quickly replies, saying, you may be right, many ninjas do work hard and are respected too for the village. Many die, but not many die in the pursuit of their own dream, which is proof of living a meaningful life. 
And that's something that I can say Naruto lives every day. Someone who's been trampled on and discarded by the village is someone who still finds hope in a dream. Not a dream to discard the village, but a dream to become the village's hero. As Hinata says those words, Tsunada can't help but think about the fallen loved ones she has lost in battle. Her little brother and her ex-lover. These were wounds that caused her to lose her ninja way. She doesn't know if they really died happily in the pursuit of their own dream because the heartache of losing them has distorted her own vision and she can't help but wonder if they were truly happy dying for their dream. Tsunada snaps back to reality when Hinata asks her if she's okay and she tells Hinata you really do love that twerp don't you kid as Hinata turns red. The next morning Hinata heads to the forest. She just made breakfast for Naruto. She's happy and ecstatic about it. She gets there. Naruto's knocked out unconscious. She panics at first but then she activates her Byakugan. She realizes he's just out cold from being tired and training hard. His hands are badly bruised and hurt. As she examines Naruto she can't help but think that he works so hard and she has a lot of work to do herself. It inspires her instills her that hard work and dedication comes at a price but it's not something she'll shy away from. It motivates Hinata. Naruto wakes up the next morning. His eyes are opening up. His eyes are adjusting to the light as well. He sees a figure but can't make out what it is or who it is. It's Hinata. She's peeling apple slices for him. He eats them happily, but Hinata really wanted to feed him, but she couldn't follow through it. Naruto then sees Shizume walk in the room. Then Shizume tells Naruto, you should really be thanking Hinata. She carried you here all by herself. Naruto then turns to Hinata and he smiles at her and he thanks her and also tells her she's stronger than what she looks. After that, Naruto gets up, ecstatic, saying that he has to master the jutsu, he just has one day left. Shizume quickly stops him and tells him, you've been out for a day, Naruto. Just as Naruto starts freaking out, because today is the day he has to master the Rasengan, and he hasn't mastered it yet. Before he starts freaking out, Jiraiya crawls in through the window as he says to Shizume, where is Tsunade? Shizume realizing what's going on, Jiraiya must have been poisoned by Tsunade. She's the only one capable of doing it without him realizing he's been poisoned. Other than that, she thinks to herself, it can't be it. Tsunade wouldn't betray the village. Not the village she came from. It simply wouldn't be possible. Shizume is in shock. She's not saying anything. Jiraiya quickly tells her, take me to Tsunade now. She quickly agrees. As they get there, they see Tsunade in the fight with Kabuto. They're facing each other. Tsunade is easily overpowering him. But Kabuto exploits her weakness, which is blood. At the sight of blood, she falls on her knees, trembling. They wonder what's going wrong. Shizume explains that she's never been the same after her loved ones have died. She's afraid of blood. Kabuto starts laughing, mocking her how powerful she used to be. A medical ninja now, afraid of blood. There was nobody that could match her healing arts. Now the mere sorry blood makes her quiver and shake like a mere coward. Shizume comes in the nick of time. She protects Tsunade. She now faces off against Kabuto. She fights him hard as best as she can, but she's no match for him. Kabuto easily protects himself from the poison, the kunai knives, and all her attacks. They seem useless. Kabuto takes her down with his kunai knife. He now sets his sights on Tsunade. Naruto comes in in the mix. Mad and upset, calling Kabuto a fake, a coward. I thought of you as a comrade. How can you deceive me now? Kabuto starts laughing, saying how he took joy in the tuna exam, making him believe he was his comrade while the whole time laughing at his back, calling him weak and useless. You're never going to be as powerful as Sasuke, Naruto. You have to accept this. Naruto upset, takes out his palm. He starts rotating, contracting chakra, and they see the essence of a Rasengan. Kabuto is shook a little bit. So is Orochimaru looking at what Naruto is conjuring, but they realize that it isn't complete. The Rasengan isn't complete, and the distance between Naruto and Kabuto is too far of a great distance. Naruto doesn't have the speed of Rock Lee. He's not that fast. This is a brunt attack. Kabuto easily evades the attack while striking Naruto down. Now Hinata is the only one standing up and they face each other. Hinata stares at Kabuto. Her Byakugan is already activated. She's already figured out his technique, the scalpel he wields in his right hand. She already knows to avoid that at all costs. Kabuto realizes that he gave Hinata too much time to figure out his technique, the way he moves. As they face each other, Hinata enters her gentle fist style in the stoic position. Kabuto remarks how much she has grown since the Trini exam. As they face each other, Hinata's dexterity and flexibility and avoidability seem to be a problem for Kabuto. He can't get it hidden. Hinata starts remarking that she feels stronger. Everything is clear to her. The motivation after watching Naruto and Shizume fight against Kabuto, she feels like she has to do something, something that can make them proud of her. As she faces Kabuto, she starts realizing that she has a problem and Kabuto knows what's going on as well. Kabuto healed Hinata around the tuning exam. 
He knows that Hinata hasn't healed yet. It's not possible. Hinata starts fatiguing down as Kabuto starts overwhelming her with his stamina. And of course, Kabuto is still faster. Hinata loses the two advantages she had, her eyes and her stamina. Because Kabuto entered the fight exhausted already. He faced Tsunade, he faced Shizume, and he faced Naruto, and now Hinata. His life combat experience is far too great for Hinata. As he strikes her down, Naruto sees this. He gets right back up. Naruto looks at Hinata. And he tells her she fought great. Hinata fought like a ninja, like a warrior, not someone that you take pity upon, someone who fought with their heart out. Naruto tells Hinata to rest, because he's going to handle this. Kabuto starts laughing. What can you do? You joke? Naruto gets upset. Now he summons a shadow clone jutsu. As he summons this jutsu, Kabuto attacks Naruto. As he attacks Naruto, Naruto grips his hand. This happened in the TV show, guys. So we have Naruto grip Kabuto's hand. Kabuto's demobilized for some reason. He can't escape. Neither does he punch Naruto with his free hand. Kabuto's made helpless, and he realizes this as he watches the Shao Kun compress and rotate the chakra in a manner that wasn't done before. As Jiraiya and Rochimaru watch, it is now completed. Jiraiya remarks that he's a perfect Rasung on an A rank jutsu, one of the four Fukage's strongest jutsus. Naruto remarks and looks at Kabuto saying, I got you now, bitch. He smashes the Rasengan right through Kabuto's chest cavity. As Kabuto goes flying several meters backwards, the mere force of the Rasengan chakra blast makes the ground even crumble. Kabuto has been brought down. He not on the floor looks at Naruto and remarks how great he is. He brought down Kabuto. But just as she thinks that, Kabuto stands right back up. He bloats how his healing jutsu is far too great to be brought down by that jutsu, saying he's much more amazing than Naruto or even Sasuke is. But he falls right back down on his knees, confused, doesn't know what's going on. The damage is far too great, Tsunade explains. But at that very moment, Naruto falls right to his knees as well. Tsunade confused, while Kabuto starts boasting that at the last second he attacked Naruto's heart chakra network. Hinata activates Byakuan to confirm this, and it's true. Tsunade starts healing Naruto right away, as Kabuto says it's useless, he can't get help from the Nine Tail Fox anymore and he doesn't have the will himself to save his own life. Tsunade keeps on trying, remembering her loved ones. She will not allow another boy to die in pursuit of their dream right in front of her eyes. It can't happen. It will not happen. Tsunade starts breaking down into tears as she's losing hope. But at the very last second, Naruto raises up his hand and he grabs a necklace and says, I have won. And Tsunade smiles at him. Wachimaru takes notice. He now charges Naruto. With Jiraiya being too slow, Naruto is an open target. Tsunade leaps right in front of Naruto, taking the blade right to her chest. Orochimaru is surprised and shocked as he says, You would sacrifice your life for this mere child, Tsunade? Tsunade replies, You fool, I'm not the one dying today. As she launches a missile to Orochimaru's dome, creating a shockwave that was felt by everyone in the area. Orochimaru goes flying backwards, spinning as the hit almost slept him. With that being said, we now enter to the sounding deadlock battle. Yo guys, so you guys reached the end of the video, hope you guys liked it, and probably you guys want more, but this is the end, unfortunately. And before I take off, I really want to touch on the topic why it took me a while to make this one. Honestly, it's because I wasn't content with the other ones I made. This is my sixth attempt on making it, and I am content with this one, I guess you can say. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought, feedback, any other suggestions. Like I said, I'm going to start kind of trying to rotate to different type of videos, but I'll keep making this one as long as I see the support. And until next time, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, and see you guys later.